Hello you guys, welcome to part 2 of my holiday vlog on my robe à l'anglaise. Um, as you can see, I'm standing in front of my fabric stash. This is where I have most of it, only the big rolls are in my closet and I just reorganized them. I have my petticoat and drafting materials, my heavier cottons and my lining fabric here. This is fabric that I have half a meter to one and a half a meter and down here is the fabric that I have a little bit more of. Most of them I have two meters because when I started buying it, I did not realize how much fabric that a historical project would eat. Um, in here I have a turquoise taffeta that I really want to turn into something from the 1890s. I have that plan since a year, but I never got to it. And so it's waiting here along with all the other fabric and yeah. Now I'll get back to sewing. Here is the pattern that I drafted yesterday and I will transfer it to paper now at seam allowance and do some obvious corrections. I would like to have the back a bit longer and then I might also have to make this part longer and this may be a little bit higher and then I'll do a mock-up. Okay, I transferred the whole thing here onto paper, added seam allowance and I lengthened the back. I also worked a little bit on those seam lines and I spilled my coffee and used my tissue... Eh, my fabric sample. <laughs> to clean it up, which sucks, but I won't need it anymore. And now I'm going to cut this out from this cotton. It is quite stiff and then I'll sew a mock-up and I will add bones in the front, one on each side. Then there will be one bone in the center back one here and one here maybe here okay i'll bone all the seams <laughs> i'll see um yeah i'll get to work now and i'll make a mock-up and hopefully it will fit and i will not have to do too many alterations but since i patterned it on my dress form and she cannot i can't lace the stays close on her so I think it will be too big in the waist, but I'll see. So here we are, got caught in the flow again. I sewed all the pieces together and I added two bones in the front and one in the back. And I'm pretty surprised it fits quite well. I have to take it in here a little bit and then I will trim some of this away because now the bones overlap each other and they shouldn't. And I will make the neckline a bit wider and I have to, I'll show you, work on this sleeve situation. But other than that, I think I'll take it in here and here. Other than that, it fits pretty well. I'm surprised. It's looking good. So, is she soft? I um, have taken in, whoops, this seam and I have worked on the arm situation and now it is pretty good. So I will transfer these alterations to paper and then I will start making that bodice. I totally forgot to update you. Again, um, I cut out all the pieces from the shell card and from this lightweight white cotton 
that I'm going to use as a base for my bodice. I will do three layers because I want it to be pretty on the outside and the inside. So this is going to be the layer with the bones. I ironed all the seams open and now I am sloppily because no one is going to see it sewing on boning channels and then join the base layer and the top layer, cut out the lining and then I will draft the sleeves. A little bit afraid of that but it's going to work out, I hope. I will use the um, pattern that I use for my chemise as a base. So I um, boned the base layer and what I'm doing now is I pin the top layer onto it and then I will sew with a running stitch around it just to keep it in place and afterwards I will draft the sleeve pattern. I finished the bodice, I inserted all the bones and I sewed the base layer and the top layer together with a invisible whip stitch and now I am going to draft the arm pattern so yeah that's what I'm going to do and then I will take one of my older patterns and use it as a guide, the one from the chemise, and then I have to drape the um, train for the upper part of the dress. You see it fits horribly on my dress form. It's so nice and lies everywhere flat on me, except for the back because I made a mistake. I used bones that are too stiff, so it's standing away a bit, but I hope that's going to be okay. <laughs> no one will see it in the back, my hair will cover it. I just made the pattern for the sleeves and I'm now going to try that on. Um, it was a bad idea to pin it on the inside, I'm going to pin it on the other side. but. I hope it works because I hate drafting sleeve patterns. I am making ruffles and as soon as I start to talk, Spinoza starts to talk too, which is somehow funny. Let me show him to you. Yumi! I want to see you. Oh, say hi! I have hidden a treat for him in this beer box and he's trying to get it out since about two hours and I think now he's pretty pissed. Huh? Okay, he's so cute. Back to the ruffles. I'm making ruffles. As you can see, I'm gathering the fabric. I have a second strip there and these are going to go around the sleeves. They are a bit big on me but considering that I will have my chemise beneath it I will not take them in at this very moment. I sewed them together with French seams and I machine sewed the hem because I think the ruffle is going to cover it. I don't know if it is too big but I don't want to have two different sizes and so I went with more or less a compromise because if I made them smaller they would look like nothing around the neckline I think. But anyway, I'm doing ruffles now and I'll see you later. So that's what it's going to look like and um, you can see the thread here and you will also see um, how I sewed it on later but as I am going to embellish it I am pretty <laughs> sure I can cover it up and it will look nice in the end. So today is Tuesday and 
It's again morning, two days of vlogging, but who cares? So I finished beading the neckline and what I'm now doing is um, I was thinking about how to close the gown in the front and of course with hooks and eyes but I did not know where to attach them because I want to line these up as evenly as possible and I thought if I attach them directly to the boned piece it might not be as even as I want it to be. So, and I made something like a little um, modesty panel, which is also good because if it gapes, you will not see my stays. And I'm going to attach either the hooks or the eyes on this side, and on the other side, they will be attached directly to the bone piece. And after finishing the closing method, I will try it on and then sew in the lining and the bodice will be done! Yay! I'll leave the lining open down here because I have to... And yeah, my fingers look horrible again. They are so dry at the moment, even though I put hand cream on every, I don't know, <laughs> three or four hours. It happens. So I will not um, attach the lining on the bottom yet because there's going to be the skirt and I hope that I can cover the raw edges of the skirt with the lining too. So I, ha I have to remember myself um, that I have to make the lining pieces a bit longer than the pattern is, just to be on the secure side. So yeah, that's where I'm at and I hope I can finish the gown today and start on the hat because I bought two ostrich feathers and I never had feathers before for a hat and I'm excited <laughs> to complete the hat to be able to place these ostrich feathers. So, I just found these in my stash and I am strongly considering to make life easy for me even though hooks and eyes or buttons would be more appropriate. Um, well, I could do a combination of these. I could start uh, up here with hooks and eyes and then as it's less tense because it's a little bit um, small in the bust area. I can use those snaps because they will not open. And down here, I'll use hooks and eyes again. I think I'll make life easy for myself. So, apart from the fact that my body does absolutely not fit on my dress form. I think it's starting to look really pretty. I just cut three meters of this jacquard and tried to drape something and it's looking good. So I'm going to do um, cartridge pleats now, then attach it to the bodies, line the bodies and the dress will be finished apart from hemming everything. So here's my finished bodice. No lining yet, no train. Um, there's a little bit of gaping here in the ruching. I will cover that with a bow later on. But so far so good. As you can see, I worked quite a bit yesterday. Today's Wednesday and I almost finished my Van Anglaise. Way! Um, I have to hem it and I think I'm going to machine hem it since I already used the machine here. So I don't think it doesn't matter anymore and since I decided to leave the ruffle there I also have a machine hem there which is 
not ideal but I think it's still pretty and that's what it looks from the back oh, I made a little train and it is as you can see fully lined I put the lining down with whip stitches and yeah it does not look perfectly pretty from the inside but it doesn't have to as long as it's nice from the outside so what I have left oops left to do is hemming it and create a bow to hide the gap in the lace as you can see it really totally does not fit my dress form Good morning guys, it is Friday and I am, yes it's a mess, attempting to make a hat and a pair of slippers to go with my robe anglaise. Someone, oh I think he wants to play. No? So yeah, that's what I'm trying to do now. Uh, he does want to play. He always wants to play with my scissors and Hey <laughs> Shotzi Now he's occupying my chair. Okay, I'm trying to make a hat. That's what I wanted to say. One sentence, two seconds. I'm sorry It took almost a minute And a pair of shoes. There's some material. I have two feathers. I made something like a taffeta flower um, I have some left taffeta that is going to be the lining that you see from beneath and the upper part will be covered in jacquard if I do have enough of the taffeta I will use it as a bias binding so you will see some of the red up there and I also want to make like a headband around the crown of the head. Oh, my English is at a border. <laughs> I have to Google head vocabulary, I'm sorry. But you know what I mean? Um, decorate it with some pearls and then the feathers and hopefully it's going to look good and hopefully it's going to be stable enough to wear it for a photo shoot. Okay, progress. It starts to look like something. Um, now I'm going to assemble the lining, see what I can do about these folds, and hopefully finish the base of this hat. So this is what it looks like finished. It's not the prettiest and I'll do better next time. Uh, here you can see some of the pictures that my boyfriend and I took and it was raining cats and dogs. My hat protected my hair but here you can see it's pretty wet. So thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed and see you next time, bye!